Namaskaram. I'm here with one of the most celebrated, talented, and one of the most iconic violinists of India today, of our Carnatic music scene, Shri M R S Kanan. Namaskaram, sir. Namaskaram. Thank you Namaskaram. so much for uh, doing this interview with us. It's my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I'll give a disclaimer before we start this interview. I had asked before the interview, uh, how would you like to address? How would you like to be addressed? Can I call you Kanan sir or Kanan ji? So he said no. Kanan is enough. So that is the privilege of being an interviewer. I don't think a lot of people will get that privilege. So I am definitely privileged that way. And I think that goes to show how much of a, how much of a human being he is. More than a celebrated artist, or more than uh, a legend, or a guru, or a teacher, a lot of people like to see themselves uh, in a position of power or in a position of, uh, uh, you know, a higher level. But here we have this absolutely wonderful gentleman who is such a legend with his violin, and we cannot wait to hear you play some beautiful pieces from your divine instrument. So I think uh, we will uh, go straight into the big question. Yes, about yes. <laughs> so there are uh, i think everybody by now uh, knows a lot about uh, shri m r eskandar who his teachers are what, where he studied and a lot of other things i think many of those who follow you or even otherwise you know the musical journey of an artist has long been celebrated so i want to know about the kannan the human being behind all of these masks and a lot of other things that many of us wouldn't have heard about you Is that please, a good way to go? Please go ahead like that. <laughs> And first of all, thanks for uh, you know addressing me as Kannan because that was a name kept by my parents. Yes. So when I was a baby, mm. that's how they named me. So I am very happy to be called like that. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, Embar stands. You know, lots of people you know think that it's my uh, hometown or something, but it is not the case. Okay. It is my family name. Oh, and okay. it is my acharyan's name oh, so lovely. so lovely. there are few families which comes under this uh, embar oh so that is what it is you know at this point i just want to share that with people oh, who are uh, watching this so that lots of people were asking me you know whenever i travel and uh, perform yes. they ask me the question like you know where embar is uh, correct because we always hear trichy and you exactly. know other places so people are used to that and i completely understand and yes. why they ask that question yes So embar is usually the so the family name comes at the end, right? For a lot of people. Yeah. But here you It, have you choose to keep that. Uh, that is how your family that, knows. That's what. That's how we we are uh, following the tradition. That is the tradition. That's how we follow that. Wonderful. Where the the idea of keeping that name before our name is like you know, we pay that respect. You know, it's like we Beautiful. we feel very fortunate and blessed yes. to come you know to be born in that. in that family. family that's that's why we do that and uh, embar is the name of the person right and um, he has a temple near kanjipuram in tamil nadu oh, oh lovely so yeah. is basically he's related to uh, the great saint ramanuja oh wonderful who was the you know the founder of like you know the the person who uh, propagated vaishnavism right 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 so right. embar was his disciple plus related to ramanuja oh wonderful so okay that's, that's a lot so of new information i'm sure a lot of us wouldn't have known this and i definitely thought embar was a name of a exactly. place i was going to even ask you you know what are your memories about your place i'm glad i didn't ask that question yeah. so <laughs> my you. native place is actually a place called tirunagari okay which is near sirgari Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what. So that is where my uh, these are uh, names that we've heard in the songs and uh, that's you know, legendary places. Yes. So yes. it is again. It's a divya desam. It's uh, the temple which is there in Tirunagari, mm. um, where the Lord is Kalyana Ranganathar, <laughs> and uh, in fact that is the birthplace of Tirumangai Arvar, one of the Arvars. Oh, wonderful! Wonderful. So that is my native place, okay. and Embar is my family name. Lovely, lovely. So I think it's uh, it's not uh, much of a surprise if we have a legend like this come from a place like that. You know, uh, it is. I think he does true justice to the family name and to the place where he was born. Uh, I've uh, uh, heard from your interviews and from your stories about how you grew up amongst your sisters and your father, Correct. who was who totally uh, you know took you up into uh, being a musical. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, you know. 
you literally you, well, uh, you were born into the lap of music music was in your blood and part of your life Correct. and uh, violin as an instrument was because the legendary lalgudi uh, it's actually because my father was a big uh, fan uh, of lalgudi jayaraman ji so apparently this is what my appa used to uh, tell me because before i was born my he took my sisters to lalgudi jayaraman ji's house and right. then um, um his father was alive Wait, then your sisters are both vocalists both, both vocalists. of them are vocalists yes. so he he took them to their house and then lalgudi gopalayar ji said that um, his father lalgudi yes lalgudi jayaraman sir's father. father said so my father made both of them to sing in front of him and get this blessings so, so he said uh, uh you know i have to say this in tamil so enna pa rendu perum paadrangale oru thakano violin solli kudu so that was the yes. words of uh, gopalayar yes. sir and uh, so that got stuck into my appa's mind and uh, when i was born he had that vision like you know he wanted his son to learn violin nice so i think because of that and years of him listening to so many um legendary singers and you no know, violinist yeah. concerts way, way back from probably i would say from 50s mm -hmm. so he my appa used to say that you know he was in my native place uh -huh. but every year during december he used to come to chennai oh. and um, he used to play tanpura for the concerts of the legend oh, legendary singers like yeah. estarius legendary singers at academy and that's how it is and my father himself was a um, sangeeta bhushanam it's a course okay Uh, by annamalai university chidambaram it's a four year course where they it's kind of uh, where a diploma or something like that which can be equivalent to that but uh, that's how he learned uh, sangeetam uh, vocal music and he was a disciple of sv parthasarathi and uh, tk rangacharya again they were all like the great singers of right. uh, estarius right. and um, so he he has traveled with them a lot so he tells me stories about all those things and he, he traveled with them and um, sat next uh, behind his guru and yeah. watching the kacheri happening and things like that. So that 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 feeling of sitting next to your gurus or people who you adore yeah, you know, yeah. really it, it, music in my blood you know really gets there right? yes absolutely mm -hmm. see learning is one part as far as music is concerned but these kind of experiences yeah. and you know that cannot be given by any uh, uh, learning or teaching or it's beyond that it's something extraordinary where you that's why they say you know even uh, when you whenever you see a elderly artist or a senior artist they say poi nariya kacheri kelpa apdi solra the why kelpa means that is when you actually understand what it is learning is up to one level and riyas the practice is also extremely important of course no doubt but music is not just that like you know you learn practice and listening so I all have to life. listening life that's what i'm saying when i say listening means it's yes. live and uh, now I'm in the day and age of uh, youtube and all it is very convenient yes. yes but the magic of live music you can't explain i, I cannot explain how mesmerizing it sounds uh, for the few little bits and pieces that i heard just before this interview and i cannot <laughs> wait for uh, our uh, uh, you know those uh, listeners to hear can we start with something uh, a small piece as you please um, yeah. since we are sitting in dubai yeah, yeah. and uh, since we are you know in an arabic nation and since you've come all the way from india maybe a dedication for dubai huh, of yeah, some desert vibes <laughs> okay let's go on a desert safari oh lovely <laughs> not on top of the camel but instead uh, on top of the music like beautiful <laughs> this is a ragam called vakula varnam like and um, in our carnatic tradition it's a melakartha ragam one of the melakartha ragams but we have you know uh, lots of uh, i i hear lots of persian music also like you know so i like the uh, oud and all the exactly and in fact i have uh, performed with um, like uh, iranian musicians oh, for a concert and all so lots of things i learn from them so you know music is like universal as you all know yes. but it's so beautiful in our carnatic tradition we have we have covered so much yes. in the sense so that we are able to imbibe or can uh, we can just connect with any other forms absolutely. of music easily so for which really carnatic music is that's why it's, it's so special like yes. that's what
absolutely that uh, those uh, uh, persian the arab notes you know it's so beautiful like you you actually get transported to the desert right exactly desert safari indeed thank you for that beautiful opening piece i'm sure uh, i don't think uh, sitting anywhere else you might probably play a piece like this right <laughs> so this is exclusive you know hot and yes. exclusive just for uh, our uh, team mohana audience uh, thank you <laughs> in fact in our uh, carnatic uh, thing like uh, the great saint tyagaraja has um, created a song in this raga ah. Era Muni, like it's a kirtana in uh, the same ragam. So it's like you know. Could you could you sing it for us? Um, I don't know the. Uh, I haven't text. learned the song okay. because I don't remember the text, but okay. it goes like. Era. I don't want to say, sing some wrong okay. uh, lyrics. So that's why yes. it goes, the tune is like this. But imagine na, na, this. Na, 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 uh, we wanted to hear the song in your vocal cords. Oh, that is anyway, the reason. please pardon my singing because uh, it, I'm. It's then the Shruti F. F. Ah, it's too and, high. Uh, <laughs> so. No, but mm. you know everybody's always heard you play the violin, so we wanted to hear your <laughs> voice too. That is why. But imagine a Tyagaraja Swami all those centuries ago he yeah. created the song. Yeah, yeah. And like you know, uh, of course there must have been some Arab Indo connection and all yes. that. But uh, it it wouldn't have crossed his mind, right? Probably the connection between the countries like this. I uh, God we knows know. we know we no 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 we have to ask this but question to Tyagaraja. But we are fortunate. Yeah. That's all. See, that is what I see. Time. Exactly. That's what I feel. The, uh, so people like you know the um, music learners or uh, beginners, you know, they now it's the world where like whatever we do or wherever we go, the first question everybody asks is, what is the takeaway? Correct. So even you know, if you ask a kid to go somewhere, Mama, what is the takeaway? If I go there, what will what I get? The benefit. So and again, now why should I go there? So. So that is the kind of period that we are in, and um, for them, what I would say is, this Carnatic music will give you an amazing platform to discover so many things, and you can connect with any genre of music around the world. That is what this music gives. Yes. I think you are the prime example for that, right? How you have blended your yeah. Western uh, learning with the Carnatic learning. So right. uh, between your Western and Carnatic, how much of a difference do you feel in the uh, you know in the whole approach like you know we have a lot to collect yeah. from the uh, from this thing right and you have shown a path how much do uh, Carnatic musicians understand that there is so much to learn from the western world and vice versa yeah what yeah do you think? It's, it's i am nobody to say about what the Carnatic musicians that they can imbibe from western classical but i can talk about what i have learned okay. and what are the things that i really loved learning this both genres of music first of all again i have to thank my father hmm. uh, sangeeta bushnam sadagopan but for him i wouldn't have done that because my father took me to a western master like you know in divakar master yes. he from her, from whom i learned western classical and what age was that that was uh, i was in my second grade or third oh, grade okay. like yeah. that's what as young as that yes. okay so in spite of being uh, you know having your sisters who are classical musicians yes. but your father being uh, you know such a classical music aficionado yes. at that age he had that uh, that vision that dirga vikshanam we say no? exactly that uh, dirga darshanam like you dirga know that's darshanam. what but uh, again again for everything there is a story i have to say that so please uh, pardon me and listen to the story no, the, the whole point <laughs> of this interview is stories so okay you want to hear your story so uh, which, which I am very fond of. Uh, I am uh, always happy to say the story because, but for all those, you know, they, they, everybody we all say like, you know, more than the destination, the journey is the beautiful thing. So likewise, more than what I am today, I always think about how my journey was. That is something, you know, any time it gives me like uh, immense happiness, uh, beyond happiness actually. It's, uh, so the thing is, um, when all as as you rightly mentioned, my appa was uh, Sangeeta Bhushanam, Carnatic music was there in my house constantly. Some cassette will be going on, uh, 
some lalgudi sirs or uh, some gn sirs gn bs so some concert will be going on my akkas will be they were practicing and both my akkas like one akka like elder sister eldest uh, she was uh, she did her ba music from queen mary's and uh, other sister lalita she did her uh, diploma course and teacher training from music college so so you can clearly understand yes. how my house would have been yes and uh, i was just saying in a another story uh, in between <laughs> about how you wore pants for the first time <laughs> only when you went to the studio, <laughs> the studio yeah. exactly that was when you were in 6th grade sixth we're grade. talking even way less than that when Absolutely. you were in second grade right? that's what but even way be before from that, kutti da from kutti. <laughs> so it's just even when i used to i remember i used to play with my car yeah. and uh, i'll be laying down on the floor and playing with my car but constantly the music was sanatan param pavan sanatan idu da point irukum but i didn't know whether it is sanatana or paramanjari adella theriyadu never mind yes that's what they say when you know in a in a family or kulandigal alla when you are bringing them up please play these kind of music play uh, sung or played by exterior vidwans like let it keep going constantly it's not you need not force him because my appa didn't force me uh. to uh, listen to this listen i didn't say that you do whatever you want but that will be going on like see the sruti is going on now correct so what happens even when i want to sing something or when you want to sing something automatically i need not uh, tell you or tell myself to sing in the pitch absolutely we do it involuntarily involuntarily that's very true so that is what it is even when i was a kid that is how the music was just going into my ears so that again all the credits to my parents absolutely i have nothing to take and um, that's how it started and um, uh, a lot of people who are watching this interview now many parents especially yeah. you know young uh, young children these days it's so hard like i i train few students you know yeah. these are not interested they have all western songs and all okay. i do my share i'll, I'll teach them yeah, yeah. you know sasa papa dada pa twinkle twinkle little star okay, okay, that's the only way to get them here but like you said involuntarily if you need children to get into music in the madri you have to play okay, that's what i'm saying nothing you need not do something extraordinary <laughs> yes please this is the take away like, this is know, the take away <laughs> in and nowadays i'm talking about Uh, time period where i was living in a, a 385 square feet house apartment where five of us were there and there were no like in built in speakers rooms nothing of that sort we just had one national Very panasonic uh, cassette player, cassette player uh-huh. that's all which has got which had two speakers you all would have seen that so you used to play that that's all so the point is the music was constant in my house so you will say like in, in case my sisters wants to practice then that will be turned off oh. because music is continuous anyway in my house nice. <laughs> so so that is how it was so for me i was just playing something i might be doing something else but this is constantly going in i didn't even pay attention to it like, to be honest with you it's not you need not but the thing is it goes inside you in your system when you are in that age that is the power and then you reach and then western music yes that's what so my father took me to you know vinay parsarathi vinay pacha known as uh-huh. vinay pacha uh-huh. who played for all ilayaraja songs uh-huh. way back in 80s uh-huh. all the solos that you hear yes. the uh-huh. punga dave and all those songs were played by him uh-huh. and uh, he took me to his house because my appa was uh, you know big uh, you know he was friend and uh, he wanted to get the guidance from vinay parsarathi's father uh-huh. named vinay raghavan uh-huh. so he took me there So after going there, like I, I played some. He wanted me to play some Tharli verse or something. I played. That's what I have learned. Yeah. Then apparently my father used to tell me like he asked, "What is that you? What is that you want your son to do? Like you know, like uh, if you want him to make more money and things like that, and also know the 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 intricacies of the violin and things like that. Why can't you just put him in Western classical music? Oh. So my father had no clue. Oh. Absolutely. So he was like Western music means what is Western? He didn't even know that. Yes, yes. <laughs> so he said, "Okay, then what should I do?" So my Vina Raghavan sir said, "You know, approach this person and he, he will teach your son." So that's one Friday I went, and today also is a Friday. So oh, nice. <laughs> one uh, Friday. I think uh, how your uh, path gets 
determined. No? That's what? all. We don't know. Like, like the whole Lalgudi uh, influence led mm. you led your father to become violin. Yes. And then one meeting with uh, Vina uh, Ra Raghavan sir. sir led him to bring you to best best in classical. That That's was, uh, all. Those are your uh, you know path. Uh, that is what I say. Like you know the kind of turns that we have in our life yeah. through one person. Like you know at the, the road less taken. That's correct. Yeah. That is what. So finally, I went there, and uh, he was so sweet, uh, the worker master, and uh, because I was also so putty, and he used to tell, like you know, <laughs> during the weekends, he tells my father that um, it's okay, you need not take him home, and all, you just leave him here and go. I will <laughs> feed him system, exactly. Right? I will feed him. Aww. I will take care of him, and I want him to practice also. So that is the kind of training given to me, and uh, that Western classical learning really. At that time, I didn't know because my father said I went. Yeah. To be honest with yeah. you. But later, I understood the importance of bowing, and uh, the can you play like uh, see now Carnatic mm. music students mm. have no idea about what Western music is. Okay, mm. one of your first basic lessons. Ipa Carnatic music le sadhi varshe. Yeah. Anna mandli Western le what is? Western, you know, like that is also we same. used to play the uh, scales. Scales. That is the first lesson. In fact, for major scale. Yes, uh -huh. that's how it is. And in fact, I uh, my father, sorry, my guru, uh, Western music master. Mm. Uh, started with the book called Hanuman Tutor. Okay. That that was a book I was using okay. then. That uh. was from that book only all the lessons uh, we used to play, like uh, you know, all okay. the students. Uh. And uh, he also made a important thing. He said, uh, which he told my father that I sh we should not buy that book. It was available in the store. Uh. He said you should not buy the book. Uh. That uh, book has 99 lessons. Uh. He has to learn all the lessons. He has to write it. By himself, ah. after he finishes the 99th lesson, mm. you please go to the shop and buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> How many of us have that patience today? I don't, know, right. I don't think so. so <laughs> if I love me printed notes, we will directly exactly. give it, you know. Ah, Maravina, okay, okay, set, set. You know, you that kind of learning, what I am trying to say is, it was like, that is the feeling I got. Yeah. But when I think back now, how great, like you know, because of that I was able to write yes. the western five line notation. So every class after the class, yeah. I used to go in my school uniform early in the morning, five oh, o'clock. Oh, wow. After the class, he made me write the lesson mm. and then only I can go home. So obviously I the think my students are listening to this. <laughs> So it's much torture, we don't give and they still they have a difficulty practicing. But uh, yeah. yeah. See so nowadays yeah. when we say this to any of our students, they think no that he's tired. Now ruder can see no matter what you sweet away. So I don't know what is sweet and what is rude. It is we are saying this for their good, that's all. It's as simple as that. So, so this since we in Karnataka we play Maya Malagoda. Maya Malagoda. Instead uh, what I learned in that was first in fact, in Western classical, they made me play open string. Oh. Anyway, the tuning will be different to oh. begin with. Ah. It was used to, you know, to you have tuned it to E, A, D, G. Oh. Based on that, only the strings are named like that. Oh, so it will right. be in the respective note. Note. Ah, ha, ha, e, A. Ah. But anyway, the first exercise was just the open string. Ah. So no playing with this uh, hand at all. Hand at all. Okay. Ah. So like. Basically, it goes like this: ah. just the open string. Ah. But the point is, you get it whether you getting it correctly in between the fingerboard and the bridge, ah. Ah. perfectly ah. in the center, and whether we are producing the right note and the bow hand, whether it is moving cleanly. These are the points to be noted right. Right. and given importance. Right. right. So those were so the points. Th that kind of a training, mm. uh, that is basically same, right, in Carnatic and uh, Western. I don't know. It depends on uh, each guru. Like I don't know how how they say here. Like we have kept Maya Malagaula as the thing that is okay. Mm -hmm. And say so it we play Sarigama Padanisa. No, but I don't know. Maybe what I generally would do is uh, the most important thing in a, in a, any instrument is like you have to bring the nadam out first. Ah, correct, correct, okay. correct. Okay, and that too. Is why that why probably that a lot of people feel violin is a very difficult instrument? Exactly, because. <laughs> Even in my childhood days, like I have to thank my mom and my neighbors mm -hmm. uh, because they were patiently putting up with the sound that I was producing. <laughs> uh, probably it, it was completely cacophonic, like you know, I don't know, like probably it <laughs> these kind of sounds and all will come from this violin. It is absolutely possible. Like oh, the, the same thing can have two kind of sounds, you see, exactly in the hands of a master and the hands of a person who don't know, and then. 
like many people you know we blame yeah. our uh, tools so, so and please uh, students it's not like master and all i am but the point is uh, what uh, lalgudi sir said once to his students he said i am a senior student pa ningala junior students all we are all students only absolutely this so was end to learning end for learning it's just because when it comes to violin the the tough part is the bowing that is the most important part that's what i have heard in uh, you know in abroad and all they make the student play just the open string the bowing okay. alone for 4 years oh just imagine 4 years they have to just keep doing this thing but after that yes they can play anything because their bow control will be so good yes. again because it is not just putting the bow straight that is not the only part yeah. the, the velocity is involved oh 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 the the pressure of bowing see uh -huh. the here like with this index finger yes. see when we so when i we have to know the optimum pressure again it cannot be said mm. it, it, it has, has to, to be, be like experience experience so that's what see what i'm saying is hip hop this is the optimum pressure so if i make it a bit more like less less pressure on that it may not sound as good as it should be it Correct. can it can have the grains like right. you know that right. and if i put more pressure mm. than more than optimum mm. this is yeah. the sound you get So, so the physics to, before the exactly techniques. the science involved science. in this particular physics you are absolutely right the velocity that matters a lot so that is why they say you have to keep practicing the bowing alone separately before you get into anything like any notes yeah or any raga or whatever you call it as yeah. can we can you play like two lines of uh, english okay. note madre mali yeah yeah Uh, because we are on the topic of western and absolutely so see, even in that see for example the first scale in western classical is a a major scale a so so this is also like how much pressure you have to give on the fingers also like oh. and the posture of the finger right right and even in western classical the the very important thing what i learned like you know was the usage of the fourth finger which really helped me when i was playing carnatic music oh. for playing certain sangatis nice yeah so the thing is uh, the what they do is in western classical everything will be mentioned while playing like uh, i should not say anyway for now i say it's yeah. pa huh. panchamam when i play panchamam open string huh. and sometimes they will mark it as four oh, oh. so the same panchamam can be played with the Fourth finger fourth also, finger. Ah. yeah. So now, let me play that first uh, with the open string. Now with the fourth finger, uh -huh. the actually the fifth note, which right. is the pancham pancham. for us. Ah. Uh, I was uh, made to play the same scales with the fifth note as open string as well as as the is the usage of fourth finger. Fourth finger. So and my uh, master used to tell me like you know generally even we can feel that you know the kind of power we have on the index finger mm -hmm. and the next finger yeah. or a ring finger or whatever yeah. like you know we may not have that on the fourth finger. Uh -huh. Okay. It's generally weak. Oh. So, so we have to get that power on that fourth right. finger also. Right. So, where in later part, like you know, when you are playing certain exercise, mm -hmm. the usage of fourth finger is very important, mm -hmm. and that will really come handy. So, that was the kind of practice given to me. Right. So, that is from the Western classical point of view. But what happened when I was coming, developing myself in Carnatic music also, certain sangatis I was able to play easily with my fourth finger. some kind of puritam some sangathis i uh -huh. can play it and show it to you yes please where uh, that really helped to play easily without mm. putting so much effort right right so like but uh, that doesn't come easy that comes with years of practice yeah yeah that um, <laughs> nothing is easy uh, just i just want to put a disclaimer <laughs> 
there is even no uh, violin is generally like like we tough. said it is tough it, it is, is tough. always people are like they're disheartened yes. to practice a violin because they say it is hard correct but that the foundation like what you had yeah. and these you know these little tips and tricks and little uh, changes and how you have inculcated both a western and carnatic correct best of both worlds you exactly. can't say that mine is the best and you know you just stay stay over there means you're staying there that, that's what good thanks to my father because he took me in you know in both directions. paths so that both directions which really helped me because at that time i didn't know i was just going because my father was taking me to yeah. to the class that's all yes in fact um, i had like you know i uh, used to like na appa konja kuda na valaya raavada maatingra na konjam andha varutham irundinde irundhadu after maybe 7th or 8th grade then i realized how important this is till then i was also like a child like anybody and uh, feeling that you know my, uh, my appa is so strict and i want to do like <laughs> then you know, but i see the difference you know like you can't stop talking about your appa I every know. second <laughs> sentence you know it is all <laughs> thanks to appa and all of uh, his contributions and his efforts and i, I hear very less of kannan i hear more of the father and that uh, that i think you know that has yeah, really yeah. Uh, shown through you know the test stood the test of time absolutely see yeah. we have to give that credit, credit you know yeah. otherwise uh, but for as i told you later stage once we become uh, grow older and then we It's realize this yes. but the fa- see we always say you know any believe in that uh, burj khalifa foundation. the foundation is a key then you can make it like 140 floors or Correct. 200 floors that is okay Correct. but what is the kind of foundation which can hold the building, hold the building yeah. that's what yeah, yeah. so, so uh, maybe i'll take raga nate uh-huh. mm. The, just this one sangadi na 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 yes this so the kind of movement that we do look from third position to first position huh. it's a, it's a kind of a bit more i'm not saying it's not nice or anything it's it's a bit more work hmm. compared to ah uh. it it goes with the see the angle of my fingering see huh. ஒரு சங்கதி இருக்கு சோ யூ கேன் ப்ளே வித் டிஃபரண்ட் ஃபிங்கரிங்ஸ் பட் இஃப் யூ அப்சர்வ் இட் க்ளோஸ்லி க்ளோசிங் யுவர் ஐஸ் அண்ட் யூ நோ தி கிளாரிட்டி ஆஃப் தட் ஃப்ரேஸ் ஐ ஃபீல் ஐ கெட் இட் பெட்டர் வித் தட் ஃபோர்த் ஃபிங்கர் யூ சே சீ played both kind of na each has a different flavor yes. let me put it that way mm-hmm. it has different but certainly this usage of fourth finger will really come handy when you are playing some kind of uh, phrases where where you need not you know what change the position and take the other fingers instead you can make it easy easy that's what see for example So riri em riri ni pamari if you want to play something like that yes. imagine you are taking the whole palm up mm. instead see this so this really helps This is really it's all about it's a big tip for all the violin students who are yeah. learning and it doesn't come easy it doesn't come uh, just because you learn one form of music no, no, you yeah, have yeah. to explore and you know widen your mind really yeah. correct you have to really uh, uh, be open to adopting the different techniques and you know making it your own like how uh, mbar s kannan is an artist who has truly um, uh, used the techniques that he learned from western music and brought it into carnatic music and made it looks so beautiful and so effortless like 
I'm not a violin expert. I like I'm not a string uh, instruments expert at all. But after you've explained and I've just seen you playing, I can already uh, see the difference on That's how a lot of other artists play and how you are playing. And it's absolutely brilliant how uh, you know, especially with students. I think this is definitely a big lesson uh, to take. Uh, yes. Any other ragam where we can um, absolutely mm. see this, uh, uh, the usage of this the. That's what you know, now you know for me. So many things where I'll be using. You know, if you yes. observe me playing even the concert, uh. the usage of my fourth finger will be like a, a bit way too much only. In fact, I should thank my guru uh, Kanya Kumari Garu yes. first of all yes. for accepting me as a student way yes. back in '86. And that was uh, a chance incident, right? Yes. Where you were not initially her student, Absolutely. but by chance from yes. your original teacher, you yes. had to uh, use her uh, yes. expertise to. Correct. Uh, after the scholarship and you scholarship. know, uh, you know, she was so super busy then, yes. and uh, it's so really. You were a prime student. Right? Yes, that's yes. correct. Way back in '86, but she was so busy performing with the M L Kumari, Mandalin Sinhwas, and what not like. She was basically uh, holding NRI status, so <laughs> busy like traveling everywhere, but it's so nice of her to even accept me as a student and uh, also the great thing that you know as a guru you know I really that is the, those are the qualities I feel you know we all have to imbibe in the sense before that as I told you I have learned western classical so obviously in my fingering when I went to her I, I didn't go as a basic student. Yes. Because I got my scholarship and then I went. Yes. So uh, to get the scholarship at the time, I learned from Vital Ram Murthy yes. sir, yes. for a period. Yes. So even I, I still remember the, for the scholarship, I played Bro, Bro Barama. She would have noticed my fingering and she would have just be playing one line is enough for her to like, you know, absorb. so I play like. That fourth thing. So yes. in the marriage, so she would have noticed in the in the pain. So she asked me, Appa, like um, you said, uh, my father told, like yeah. he learned Western class. I say, okay. But the greatness of my guru was like she didn't change my fingering or anything. Oh. She said, Yeah, it is different from what she plays. Hmm. But still, she had the magnanimity to say that it's okay, I'll allow you to play with the same fingering that you have. But she thought she started teaching yes. made the song that is not easy for a guru yeah absolutely for her stature that's what is simple she could have said uh, okay paya vasikara that is all okay i'll take him as my student but i want to begin from the beginning simple because simple exactly. um, because the kind of fingering he is using i am not convinced with that yes so i need to imbibe my fingering technique yes. and make him play like that i think a lot of people's lives Teachers can change. Absolutely, the right teachers can absolutely make or break you. Yes, and that's what. And uh, really, Appu and I didn't know the value of that. So when I grow up and uh, I, when I see like when that's why when I see students or uh, you know even the, uh, when I go and give master class or something, I don't try to change their fingering. I completely respect what they have learned from their respective teachers and gurus. But I can, I'll just suggest them, maybe the same Sangati tried with this fingering, it might be easy for you. Just try with this, that's what. I think uh, in today's world where you know all of us are changing countries and places and going to different places, yeah. we have access to different uh, you know online classes and everything. Absolutely. We are we are bombarded with information, bombarded with uh, knowledge, uh, you know, YouTube and other either. If you try to pick up uh, from a lot of things and you know, you get stranded. Correct. Instead, you need gurus like this who will actually show you uh, show you that no matter what your path is, all you can do is take a few bits from the guru, Correct. and the guru has to be that generous and. Not all the students who come from great gurus end up being good teachers themselves. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, just to hear that uh, this is the mindset that uh, M. Bar S. Kannan has is a beautiful thought, you know, because you need that his guru's magnanimity he needs to have. Yeah, at least I just want to have 10% of that, <laughs> like you know, that's what. That see, is the humility see. of a uh, student. 
but no, that's something amazing. That's what when I think back, I I always realize like if she had said like yeah. there is there is a show that comes on. I thought I don't know. I I saw that on Facebook. Mm. What if? Ah, okay. What if? What that if? is the name of the okay. show. What if this has happened like this? What right. if this has yeah. gone wrong? What would have happened to the world hey, okay. and things like this? So that what if I just put it for my own self? What if my guru had said like? No, pa. I won't take him as a student. Or you have to start from the beginning. Or imagine that the uh, the learning that I did so far, you know. Yeah. See, at the same time, also one more point I want to say here, like you know, the fingering was not okay, but I clearly remember that whatever I played was fine. Yeah. See, if it is completely That's not right, yeah. means then we are forced to change. That. It's just like a, a construction. Yes. Some construction just requires some kind of uh, renovation work. Yeah. And you can make it look nice. Yes. Some has to be demolished Foundation. and reconstructed. Foundation needs so to be. So it is based it. on the uh, uh, that building, like how, <laughs> what is the level of that building structure? That's all. I think this "what if" question has been from the start of this interview till this point. Ilya, what Correct. if you hadn't been, uh, you know, influenced by life? Everything. Well, everything has been a "what if" about your life, right? Absolutely. And I think that's a good way to go about life. Even if you have a negative uh, incident, yeah, that is you know, also. What if this didn't happen? What did this teach you? And what if something else? And I think you can work towards that path. Correct. Ilya. So I, uh, that's what I would uh, request all the students. Like you know, you're all really blessed, you know, to be some way or the other connected with art form, whether yes. music or dance, uh, vocal or any instruments. So please do continue. That's what I keep telling anybody and everybody. In fact, when I landed here, in you know, when I was coming by flight. I I just saw one family like they were coming and talking to me and two kids were there and they were saying I just asked him what are what are the things that you do I do drawing uh, painting swimming uh, music dance and you please do everything but make sure music or dance just don't leave that make sure you be connected with that no matter what it is not about you taking it up as profession or anything it is not just for that I always say even to my students the art form is like a, a shield. That will be protecting you, no matter what, wherever you are, do whatever you want. I think uh, that lesson we really learned during the COVID. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Exactly. When we couldn't attend the concerts, and you know, initially everybody thought, okay, artists alla me na, everybody can sit at home and all. But after few days of sitting at home, everybody realized, artists alla <laughs> na, we are all gone. We we don't listen to music. We'll all go mad. <laughs> That's yeah, right. So important it was, and as much as you know, finance and marketing, and I'm a marketing professional, okay. and I am also a music teacher. So I'm like, as much as all of that is there, Correct. for me, when I my home is my music, my music Correct. classes, and I think you know that everybody has in them, but somewhere Correct. for many people it may get drowned. No yes. matter how much it gets drowned. So I think uh, the, during the COVID time, you yeah. have done a lot of practice videos. Absolutely, with yes. Students, and I saw a lot of recent collaborations with all kinds of string instruments. Yes, yes. Do you yes. plan to do more of those? Uh, I don't know. Like uh, again, the COVID times, each in each one's life, so many um, drastic things happened, and it's uh, such a um, sad phase in generally humans, yes. human history itself. Uh, but for me what i thought i i took it in one of the you know the positive sense again when you say covid positive means you will be <laughs> like <laughs> so adukku kuda positive solla mudiyad we have to say <laughs> negative or, see that's what i i realize in fact i used to <laughs> say to my student as a don't think always positive is a good word <laughs> see at that uh, those period like 2021 you can't even utter the word positive positive appa anga poi thalli poi ra appadina i said excuse me positive ah irukanu sonna positive ah irukka koodadunna so toxic positivity <laughs> so uh, so that is that was the situation then but really i must i have no i don't know how to even thank music and the two years was honestly god was kind enough um, not to put me through any of those hassles but instead god gave me this gift called music which was completely with me supporting and encouraging or what not it was just showering happiness to me because of which only we were able to be really enjoyed like myself and uh, my disciple ranga priya yes yes like uh, actually she was uh, studying then yes. for her anyway college everything was yes. so nothing we can't even step out yeah. so what we thought that's one day suddenly it started and uh, in fact 
I have um, I have I have been playing for, with Tilaraja sir since uh, 92. Yes. Uh, you, I have put in uh, several Wikipedia yes, or uh, yes, interviews. Yes. I have said your, lots uh, about uh, your videos. Also, a lot of videos yeah. are in the uh, jamming sessions with Tilaraja. Correct. Yes. So that is again a blessing, absolutely, to be with him, just to watch him yes. and work for him. That is the biggest learning. I would say, like you know, even if you go to uh, ten different universities and studied. Yeah. And the experience correct material, but it's amazing yeah. learning. So what happened at that time? Suddenly, like we were just sitting practicing, like oh, daily will be. But what else? You eat, practice. <laughs> correct. So after that, I bought one T-shirt. I really love that T-shirt. Yeah. Like eat, uh, play, uh, so sleep, sleep. Yeah. Uh, and repeat mode. Repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else for us to do. Yeah. So this was the but thing. But Adilon to find positivity is hard. Yeah. At that, that time is what it was very hard because you're not seeing anybody else. Yes. You have to that that happiness or that positivity had to come from inside. Yeah, within. From within. Within. Yeah. That's right. And I think music. That is the only source that can give that happiness. That's what I'm trying to say that here. It's not about what I did at the time myself and Ranga Priya. Like what we felt, what we uh, we have gone through in that time. Yeah. That happiness, absolute credit to music. So that's what I, after knowing that, I have become a big, all, all the more like a uh, fanatic about music. And I keep telling everybody, please do that. So that's how we started this series. In the sense, we just we were just practicing, and then uh, one day Rangapriya's mom said, uh, um, "Kanan, I still remember which song that um, song from Salangeoli, like." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Da <laughs> 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 Like that. Yes. song, but so I wrote the notes and Rangapriya also write the notes and all. So we just wrote it and we were practicing. And she felt nice. So why not we just do this and put it in the social media? And yeah. see, the thing is, not with any other motive, not to make money out of that or I've seen nothing. Your YouTube videos, you yes. specifically written this is not to be monetized. Exactly, nothing like that. Our aim was just. It's like this one. Now I enjoy it. I just want to give it to the society. That's all. Whatever we enjoyed. So that is the aim in with which we started, yeah. and the name we gave for that as practice session series because we really practice a lot. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. we we didn't just put the song. Okay, because we know the song and April. <laughs> we keep practicing till we get it right. Rather, there was a quote no saying shortcut. that uh, no, no shortcut. You have to practice till you don't get it wrong. So that is a quote that I read somewhere. Okay. That was even more interesting. Generally, we think you practice till you get it right. And, uh, practice no, till you don't get, don't it, get wrong. it wrong at all. <laughs> that, is a, that is a very good learning, very good so, uh, lesson. So that's how we keep practicing. We take one pallavi, keep practicing on background score. So we, do, we just we just divide the notes. So only two instruments. Like Num music, uh, like um, for a lot of musicians, that uh, reaching that perfectionism is like you know, or reaching that perfect note. That is equivalent to you know the ultimate happiness. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We keep trying even now not today to also. Not for somebody else. Not for yeah, yeah. It is not exactly. for anything else. It is not for uh, to be honest, not for applause or. Uh, of course, we love uh, as a musician. Yes. You love applause or uh, appreciation, all those things. But just if you go inside and see the musician within you, yeah. like that musician, like say, "Nada vasi kira, bora dra vasi." I think that, that you know, self uh, <laughs> questioning and that self awareness yeah. is very important. Yeah. And I think as gurus, uh, the guru also shows a lot of students. But students also, or you know, every music lover, yeah, yeah. main purpose of music, and you know, what is your takeaway? Our takeaway is not for anybody else. Yeah. So finally, this is that is how this whole thing started. Even this happiness, sharing the happiness 
with the people whom you care yeah. and uh, that's how we started and still we can't forget the first song we recorded it was Potti uh, Vecha Malliga Mutta that song. Uh, yes please. <laughs> Partner, first we recorded this. The way we recorded was we have to keep practice many times, and we just use a phone, yeah. not using any computers or anything, mm. just a normal phone recording. Yeah. We have to keep practice many times, then record it over the phone, yeah. and we have to play from the first background till the last note oh, oh, without, oh. Break. without break. Even if you make one mistake yeah. in the last pallavi, yeah. you have to play it again. We Old said, school recording exactly, style. Exactly, that is nice. our style. Very so, there nice. is no in between punching and all, no possible, not possible, Content no editing, nothing. So, we had finally, we what we said, uh, what we told to both, you know, I, I told her also, we are not working on any time frame. Mm. <coughs> we have not signed up to any company that we have to give this yeah. by this time. No. We are working under no compulsion yeah. out of our own will. So, what we have to do is we have to do justice to our own conscience. So keep practicing. Some song we just played for like 10 times or 15 times. It's okay, jolly. In fact, we let us enjoy it. I like that advertisement called Surf, you know, Surf Excel. They say, they say Kara Nalla. Like this, Tappu is very good. No? So that we will play it again, no? I think that mindset a lot of us don't have. Number one, the practice is like a big burden madri for a lot no. of students. But I think when you once you see that how much of a beauty and enjoyment and exactly. where that music touches you in your soul, uh, it really makes a difference in a lot of ways. I think uh, uh, Dharalma topics we have covered so far I and I think we can still continue talking for many many more hours. But uh, can we wind up with any beautiful, any of, okay, uh -huh. very generic question. I think everybody must have, must be asking yeah, you. Yeah. Any favorite raga? Oh, this is uh, in the Madhuri question. <laughs> so See, in the full <laughs> interview, <laughs> like, I didn't ask any generic question. In the matto or a question I asked you. Like. It's, of course, it's a wonderful raga. I am nobody to talk about the raga and all. But anyway, it's her favorite and my, my favorite too. And so many people, whoever listening to it, will yes. love this raga. So. Beautiful. famous uh, Malayalam song, Pramadavanam. <laughs> yes, you please sing. Yeah, 
yeah, I have the notes because I'm not in touch. But I, um, I played in one of the wedding concert where it was um, uh, uh, Kerala uh, oh. wedding. So they asked for that Malayalam song. So I wrote the notes and I played that. Well, Such lovely. a beautiful composition, brilliant. Maybe ending piece we will record it and we will. I think way. ending note. I mm. have a request. Yeah. Uh, because I am a Malayali. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Uh, I really want you to please play Harivarasana. Oh, okay. Yes, please. <laughs> அப்படிதான் சொல்ல பாட்டோடு <laughs> 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 Thank, Thank you, you also like you know I'm so happy that you have interviewed me like you know we have so much music knowledge and it's so beautiful to like you know when you ask a question also it is so connected and you know, I'm able to connect with it and uh, that is something like you know a musician interviewing another person yes. I mean, another musician is always very very special for any musician <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very very blessed Thank I you. think for a closing note uh, yes. as a malayali i have a very humble request please play uh, the song that puts ayappa to sleep hari varasana sure yeah <laughs> Thank you.